Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down what I believe to be some of the top 5 sweatiest loadouts for you guys to run in Trials of Osiris, or really just any sort of sweaty game mode. So as you guys know, I do play a lot of Trials of Osiris. I'd like to just grind it as much as possible, help people go flawless. I do usually go flawless every character every week, and so today I do just wanted to help you guys out. Maybe if you were having trouble with some of your builds or just didn't really know what weapons to use, Today I'm going to help you guys with some of my top 5 sweatiest loadouts and hopefully these will make Trials of Osiris and even just the Crucible a little bit easier for you guys today. So before we get into it guys, these aren't in any sort of particular order, but this is my first loadout. I call this one the Lucky Lucky Loadout and that's because of the Hawkmoon. This weapon will actually allow you to have 3 in the Luck in the Chamber bullets on your primary and this gun is absolutely incredible. If you guys use I as Luna or any sort of hand cannon that has high impact build like the Ill Will, this is absolutely incredible. If you guys use the Ayo's Luna for a little bit, and then you switch over to the Hawkmoon, just so you guys are a little more used to how those guns work, you'll find that the Hawkmoon can be um, one of your sweatiest guns ever, just because of the fact that it has those three Luck in the Chamber bullets. Now for my second weapon, I have the Irene RR4. You can receive this weapon from the Gunsmith on certain weeks. Now this one has Luck in the Chamber and on flinching, so this is why I actually call this the Lucky Lucky Loadout. Now for the heavy weapon, I've got an LMG machine gun. But as you guys know, you can always switch over to your Galahorn if you're really trying to just make sure you get guaranteed kills. You're going to want to just swap over to Galahorn every time that the Heavy comes around. It's just going to be the easiest weapon to get kills with. You just need to keep in mind that you do have a rocket launcher equipped, so any close range kills may be a little bit difficult. And you want to try to keep it at range when you have your Heavy weapon out. Now for the exotic armor piece on this Titan build, I do have the Dune Marchers on. Now these are actually pretty nice because they increase your sprint speed and you move faster while you're aiming down sights. So while you're aiming down sights with your Hawkmoon or whatever other primary you decide to use while using these Dune Marchers, you're going to be able to strafe back and forth a lot faster, which makes it a lot harder for the enemy to hit you, but at the same time you can hit them just as easily. Now also when you're using your weapons and your armor, you want to try to put on an intellect discipline build, meaning that your intellect and your discipline are maxed out. And then on your strength, you'll have one node equipped as well. That's like the best loadout you can get, although it is a little difficult because you'll have to get the perfect set of gear with intellect discipline and strength just at the perfect places. And you need to like mess around with all of the upgrades and stuff until you finally get that perfect. Now for the artifact, I do like to use the artifact that grants you a better radar, a more detailed radar. So if you guys have ever played on the Hunter class, you'll know that they have that, that perk on their skill tree that allows their radar to just be way better. And this is, it breaks down the radar from about 4 pings into about 8 or 9. So when people are really, really close to you or trying to get around a corner, you'll be way more precise on the radar. And it's a lot easier for you to figure out in the exact location they're in and make better decisions on your plays based off of that, which is why I run that artifact. Now also for your gear when you're making your classes, the gear isn't really all that important so long as your perks and your are correct. It doesn't really matter what specific gear you want. It's really more about the perks on the gear that you get. So... As for my chest piece, I have increased ammo and hand cannons because I already know that the Dune Marchers have an increased ammo for sniper rifles. So at the same time, I don't want to stack up those perks. You want to keep that in mind as well. Don't stack up your perks. You want to have one perk for your hand cannons, one perk for your sniper rifles for the ammo capacity. And then on my gauntlets, I also have increased reload with my sniper rifle. So as you can see on that build there, it's pretty perfect. I've got increased reload on my sniper rifle as well as the bonus ammo for both of my weapons, allowing me to not have to worry about picking up special as often because that I'll be able to just carry way more and hopefully not have to pick it up as often, making myself vulnerable and never running out of ammo. Now for this next build, guys, I'm on my Warlock. Now, I don't know if you guys want to call this sweaty or cheap, but I've got the Mighty Multi-Tool on here. You're going to want a quick draw on for this build because of the fact that we actually are running a Fusion Rifle. Now, the, the Fusion Rifle I'm running here, I've got the 77 Wizard. Now, this thing is actually quite good, and the range on it is incredible. The only thing that you have to keep in mind with the 77 Wizard is the charge-up time. Unfortunately, it does not have accelerated coil, allowing me to charge it up faster. Now, that's where the quick draw perk comes in on the Mighty Multi Tool, because what you're going to want to do is run your 77 Wizard as more of a primary weapon, or really just at least engage all of your gunfights with the 77 Wizard when you can. So you'll hit them with the 77 Wizard, and then because of the quick draw perk on your Mighty Multi Tool, you're able to switch it out really fast, and the 77 Wizard is going to melt them down quite low to the point where you can one tap them with your Mita, possibly even two tap them, just depending on the range. So that's why that quick drop perk is being run on the Mita Multi-Tool. Now this is where the loadout gets extremely cheap is with the gear. So what you want to do is run the Claws of Aha Mankara. Now what this is going to do is it's going to increase your melee attack speed. And it's also going to grant you an additional melee charge. And now keep in mind you are on your Stormcrawlers. So this is basically like one of the ultimate Sith Lord builds. You can use that melee to basically outgun a lot of the shotgunners. That melee is so ridiculous you can usually melee farther than a lot of shotguns can shoot. 
Now, unfortunately, my Trials chess piece doesn't have intellect discipline, so you just keep in mind, guys, you do want to try to get that intellect discipline built. But as far as the exotic perk is concerned, you do want to have those Claws of Omnikara on for this build. That's going to give you that additional melee charge. Now, for the boots, I've got increased Rocket Launcher Emerald because, like I said, I do most likely want to switch to the Galahorn. Now, if you're not in Trials of Osiris, switching weapons isn't exactly preferred because it's just going to take too long in a rumble match. Or if you're in a super sweaty like challenge mode with a tournament or something, you're not going to want to waste time changing your weapons. So you do want to have a rocket launcher on that has tracking on it and possibly has the ability to have cluster bombs after it shoots. Now that's where those boots come into place. So you have those increased rocket launcher ammo and that does throw people off a lot in Trials of Osiris because people will just assume you only have two shots nowadays. But with those boots, you'll actually be granted three shots. So once the team calls out, like, all right, all right, he's out of rockets, some teams will call out and completely be thrown off by the fact that you have a third rocket. And that can allow people to win a heavy round just like they're alone because people won't realize you have the boots on. Now for this next loadout, we are on my Hunter, the Blade Dancer class. Now before we get into this build, guys, you want to go into your skill tree and you are going to want to run Quick Draw. This is one of my favorite perks on this class is it allows your guns to be readied immediately when you switch to them. And that's actually a pretty big factor in a lot of game modes because when you switch your weapon, it'll just be automatically ready to fire. You won't have to do any animations or anything like that. Now for the primary on this one, we're rocking the Eye is Luna with Last Resort, Hand Loaded, and Luck in the Chamber. So with the Last Resort perk on, you actually will get bonus stats if you're the last person alive, which is really awesome in Trials. Now for the second weapon, we have Thousand Yard Stare from the Quest, the Firefly, Rifled Barrel, and again, Last Resort. So we've got Last Resort on both of our weapons. So if I'm the last alive on this build, I'm always good to go because of the fact that I've got that last resort. It just gives me a crazy big advantage if I'm ever the last alive and have to do any sort of clutch situations. It just makes things a lot easier. Now the greatest thing about this build is the fact that you're not rocking an exotic primary or secondary, allowing you to just use Galahorn straight up. So this is a way better if you're trying to run into Rumble. This is definitely way of a better loadout. Unfortunately, the last resort perks won't come into play as often or probably not even at all. But just because of the fact that you can rock Galley the whole time does make things a lot better because you won't have to switch when the heavy drops. Now for the gear part of this build, guys, you really do want to be focusing on your discipline as we are going to be running the Shinobi's Val. So these are some brand new gauntlets brought with the Rise of Iron. And as you can see, I don't really have any good perks on there. I've got Shotgun Reloader. However, I'm not really a shotgunner, so I'm going to use a couple of glass needles here. Try to get the perks that I want, which is would be to have increased hand cannon reloader. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on our first try, so we're just going to twist the fate one more time. Hopefully get lucky and manage to get the build that we need. And we did, so we've got Fusion Rifle Reloader and Hand Cannon Reloader now, which is perfect because we are rocking Eyes Luna. Now with the Shinobu's Val, you get double skip grenades, which is why you do want to make sure that your discipline is maxed out. And again, make sure your chest piece has bonus ammo for your primary and or the secondary, and then you can, you're good to go. Now for my legs, I have a perk that I don't really hear too many people talking about, Second Wind. So on respawn, weapon and movement speeds are greatly increased. Now, I'm not really too sure if that stacks with the Quick Draw perk on your Blade Dancer, but regardless, anytime that you get revived in Trials of Osiris, you will be able to run a lot faster for about 10 seconds. So you're able to get out of any situations, like if you died in a bad place, this will help you out and it'll allow you to gain some distance, or possibly even close some distance if you're running a shotgun or just if you're in a certain situation, in order to get that damage out a little bit faster or get away from some enemies. Now for this next one, guys, we've got Outbreak Prime, Devil's Dawn, and the heavy weapon of your choice, now for the gear, we're still rocking Dune Marchers. A lot of people will say that Outbreak Prime isn't really a PvP weapon, and a lot of people just think it's mostly for PvE. Now, in my opinion, and with the Dune Marchers on, the Outbreak Prime is actually an incredible weapon, and if anything, it's actually a little bit overpowered. I was running it even just last weekend with the Dune Marchers, and the strafing speed mixed with that Outbreak Prime is actually really devastating. And because of the fact that those Siva Swarms come out, although they don't do much damage, it can lower some people's health, and in special occasions when someone's already low. I've actually had a few kills where the Outbreak Prime Siva rounds was enough to just finish someone off, and even assist some teammates. Now, for the Gauntlets this time, although they're extremely ugly, I am rocking Maul's Maulers, just because of the fact that it has increased melee attack speed, as well as the increased reload time for the Outbreak Prime. Now for the Devil's Dawn, it already has three bullets in it, so you may be reloading it a little more often than in other snipers, so it's up to you whether or not you want to run increased sniper rifle reloader or increased primary reloader, but in my opinion, I believe that the increased primary reloader isn't exactly necessary all the time with the Outbreak Prime, because if you get a headshot with the final bullet, it's going to have that speed reload regardless, so just keep that in mind, you may just want to run the sniper rifle reloader, but that's totally up to you guys, just make sure you guys have those dune marchers on, and we are also rocking the hammer subclass this time, now for the Hammer subclass, I do like to use Sun Charge. Now if you guys have ever used the Striker class, it's basically like a shoulder charge except for when you're in your hammers. 
Now that is what really is extremely OP. You can just rush into room, clear him out with the Sun Charge. That perk is absolutely ridiculous. I don't see too many people using it because it does take a little bit of getting used to and it is actually quite nice in the end. Now also you can use the fusion grenades which you can stick to people to get a one hit kill so long as they're not running maximum armor. I know one of my friends is extremely good with fusion grenades down to the point where he can almost get a kill with one every single round of trials. Now some people find it extremely annoying and other people find it cheap but in all honesty a kill is a kill and in Trials of Osiris and you can really choose to use whatever you want so if you're good with fusions you may want to consider those as well. Now for this final loadout guys we are on the Void Walker Warlock class rocking the last word and the sniper. Now it doesn't really matter which sniper you use, everyone has their preferred sniper. For me, I like the thousand yard stare the best, but you could easily prefer another one. So I'm not going to say to use any one specifically, but just make sure that you have last word on a sniper of your choosing. Again, heavy weapon doesn't really matter too much because you're going to be switching it out on the heavy round for Galahorn if you're really trying the hardest. Or you could just go ahead and wave it off if you really don't want to play heavy round. I know that's what I try to do a good majority of the time. Now for the Warlock, the actual build, you do want to make sure you've got those Axion bolts on. Now Axion Bolts in combination with the chest piece, the void paying investments, you're going to spawn with full grenade energy every single time that you're alive, including when you get revived. So every time you get revived, you're guaranteed to have another Axion Bolt. And because of the chest piece, you're also going to gain an additional Seeker, which is extremely effective for clearing out rooms or really just drawing people out of their cover because they're guaranteed to get hit by that Axion Bolt. Also, if you really wanted to go as far in... Also, if you really wanted to go above and beyond, you could also run Void Text Mastery. So this increases the range of your Axion Bolt Seeker and the duration of Vortex Effect from your Nova Bomb and Vortex Grenade. Now, when you use that perk on your skill tree, it's the top right perk. And that perk will actually allow your Axion Bolt to chase somebody for a very long time in combination with the chest piece. I've seen people get chased for up to about 20 seconds all the way across and around the map. So that is extremely effective, especially when drawing people out of cover, like I said before. Now, finally, what you also want to try to have on is a Helmet which will grant you additional super energy every time that you revive somebody. So for me, I've got the Mask of the Fair Eye on, and as you can see, there is a perk here. So for me, I've got the Fair Eye hood on, and as you can see, there's a perk here called Angel of Mercy. So every single time that you revive somebody, you're going to gain more super energy. Now that's really effective in Trials of Osiris, because even after the round's over, you can run to one of your teammates and res them up and gain a little bit of super energy as a bonus, even though the round's already over, so that's extremely helpful in Trials of Osiris. But other than that guys, those are all five of my loadouts that I like to run in Trials of Osiris. Those are the top five sweatiest loadouts that I usually run. So hopefully this does help some of you guys out, just to at least enjoy the Crucible a little bit more. Use some decent loadouts in case maybe you guys hadn't thought of them yourselves. So I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for daily Destiny videos on this channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow in another one. Peace.